Welcome to RAW Online. I am Dr. Alice, Associate Professor in Microbiology. In today's lecture, we will be seeing about the components of immune system, which includes the organs, cells and the various products that involve in the immune response. So we will be looking into the various lymphoid organs that participate in the in Im immune response, the various immune cells of the lymphoid lineage and other cells of the immune system and also we will be looking into the major histocompatibility complex and its typing methods. So now what is lymphoreticular system? So it encompasses two components, one is the lymphoid component, the other one is the reticuloendothelial component. So the lymphoid component plays a major role in specific immunity. It consists of the lymphoid organs, the primary lymphoid organ or the central lymphoid organs like thymus, bone marrow and also the peripheral lymphoid organs or the secondary lymphoid organs like lymph node and spleen. The lymphoid tissues like mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, gut associated lymphoid tissue or cutaneous associated lymphoid tissues and also the immune cells which include the lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes, the T lymphocytes and then the effector cells which include the plasma cells. So these comprises the lymphoid component. Next is the reticuloendothelial component. It contributes to non-specific immunity. The main cells that come under this reticuloendothelial component is the phagocytic cells and uh, they are concerned with the scavenger function. So first let's look into the organs of the immune system. So these are the various organs um, of the immune system which includes the central lymphoid organs or the primary lymphoid organs that is the bone marrow and the thymus and then we have the secondary lymphoid organs the lymph nodes at various sites and then we have the spleen and also we have uh, other mucosa associated lymphoid tissue like uh, malt, galt and also the cutaneous associated uh, lymphoid tissue which comes under the tertiary lymphoid organs. So before moving into the organs of the immune system, let's have a look about hematopoiesis. So all blood cells, they develop from a hematopoietic stem cell. So we know hematopoietic stem cell has two properties. They are pluripotent as well as multipotent in nature. And now where does this hematopoiesis begin? This hematopoiesis begins uh, during the first week of the embryonic uh, life in the yolk sac. And during the third month, this hematopoietic stem cell from the yolk sac, it migrates to the fetal liver and spleen. And by seventh month, from the liver and spleen, it migrates to the bone marrow. And from seventh month onwards and after birth, and as the individual ages, hematopoiesis happens only in the bone marrow. It no longer happens in the liver or spleen. But as the individual ages, um, uh, it mainly hematopoiesis mainly happens in the axial bones, uh, mainly the pelvic bones, uh, the ribs, skull, vertebrae. These are the main sites where hematopoiesis happen. And now uh, let's move on to the first uh, lymphoid organ that is the bone marrow. So bone marrow and thymus are called as the central organs of the immune system because uh, these are the two main um, uh, lymphoid organs uh, where these uh, lymphocytes develop and they mature. That's why they are called as the central organs of the immune system. So when there is any defect in these uh, two lymphoid organs, it will tamper the immune response. So now the progenitor T cells and the B cells, both of them, they originate in the bone marrow. And uh, B cells, uh, the maturation uh, happens in the bone marrow. However, the T cell maturation happens in the thymus. So from the bone marrow, the T cells migrate to the thymus and they mature in the thymus and not in the bone marrow. So now uh, as we look into 
the function uh, of bone marrow, uh, we need to uh, know about uh, this particular organ called bursa of Fabricius. Uh, this organ is present in the birds and this is the predominant lymphoid organ that is present in birds. So initially, uh, the, T the B cell development and its maturation was studied in this particular organ that is bursa of Fabricius. And also the B cells got its name or the letter designation from this particular organ that is bursa. So B cells are called as bursal lymphocytes. And now when we take birds, where is this bursa of Fabricius located? It is located in the dorsal part of cloaca of birds. And now in birds, uh, this organ develops by the 15th day during the embryonic life. And it uh, becomes fully functional when the you know, bird hatches out from the egg and it starts to involute uh, by 7th or 13th week. So as I said earlier, uh, these B cells are also called as bursal lymphocytes because they got the letter designation from this organ, bursa of Fabricius. So now uh, the B lymphocytes that develop in the bone marrow, which is the primary lymphoid organ, they migrate uh, to the peripheral lymphoid organs and they get seeded in various sites of these peripheral lymphoid organs. So when we take the lymph node, uh, the cortical area of the lymph node, we call it as the bursal dependent area or B cell dependent area and also the medullary cords. And in spleen, the mantle, the germinal follicles and the peripheral region are called as the bursal dependent areas. So they will be very rich in these B lymphocytes or the bursal lymphocytes.